Hardness may break. And this may not only happen because there's a fire in the building or you spill some water over the hard disk. Hard disk may just break like that. And the hard disk vendors actually run tests on that and then they can make an estimate on how likely it is that a hard disk breaks. So there's an official vendor claim that's usually on the order of 1 million to 1,500,000 hours mean time to failure or MTTF. And then if you factor in how often is that hard disk actually switched on, you can compute an annualized failure rate or AFR, which is around 0.88%. There was an interesting study by Bianca Schröder et al, who looked at those numbers and she found that in reality, it's more like two to 4% annualized failure rate, as well as up to 13% on some systems. So we should be worried about those numbers because in a data managing system, you want to make sure if you write data to the hard disk, you want to be able to retrieve the data at all times. If it may happen that, that the hard disk fails and you're not able to retrieve the data, you totally ruin the consistency of your database. So we have to look at how to improve the reliability of hard disks. And a very famous yet simple idea is to use multiple disks at the same time because this decreases the likelihood of a failure. And this works as follows. It's called redundant array of inexpensive disks or RAID for short. So motivation is to be able to survive one or multiple disk failures. So a RAID doesn't help against fire in the building. If all the multiple disks burn down, maybe you don't gain so much or if you spill water on all of the disks, this is not going to help. RAID helps against situations where you have a hard disk error. So the core idea of RAID is you use multiple cheap disks and somehow combine them to some sort of virtual hard disk drive. And you store data redundantly. That's very important. Otherwise, you wouldn't gain anything. So in RAID, there are different RAID levels and the RAID levels make different guarantees with respect to failures of the drive. So there are different degrees of redundancy and we will also see that there are different effects on performance. So let's look at the most important rate levels. Let's start with rate zero. In rate zero, there is no redundancy actually. In rate zero, you simply stripe the blocks over the different devices. So if you have a block here, let's say this is 4K or something like that, but you might also use something different, it doesn't matter too much. In RAID 0, you store the first block on this device, second here, third here, fourth here, and so forth. So it's basically round robin distributing the blocks over the different devices. Well, this has an important effect and that is, now assume you want to read all of the blocks. Then you can read the two drives in parallel. So you can read here and here in parallel which means basically you can expect two times the read performance and two times the write performance in such a setup. However, if you lose any of those devices, assume we lose this one, maybe then you didn't lose all of the blocks, just the even blocks you lost in this example, and you still have like half of the blocks available, but this is of course not what you want to have. If you lose a drive, you want to be able to retrieve all of the blocks still. That's an important requirement we have for RAID. So basically in RAID 0, there's no improvement with respect of failure rates, only in the sense that you do not lose all of the data, you, you only lose parts of the data, but you lose the data. If there's an error on one of the devices, you will lose some data. So that's not so useful for this rate level. The only thing that's improved here is performance. Here we are seeing a difference. So there are other le rate levels and one is rate one. So what do you do in rate one? Basically you mirror the blocks over the different devices, which basically means it, it is as if you had a black box, the black box contains two devices and from the outside you send your read and write requests to that box. Inside this black box the data is stored on two hard disks at the same time. 
So maybe some of you use that, some external hard drives do exactly that. They use the RAID 1 level, which means they duplicate, they mirror all the data from the different devices. And now if anything goes wrong with one of the devices, you can still go to the other device. Actually, what you can also do is you keep the system switched on, replace the drive that failed, put in a new drive, and then the system will copy all of the data from the surviving drive back to the new drive. So eventually you will end up with a second drive with a copy of all of the data again. This rate level is very useful in practice, so you don't gain anything with respect to reads or writes. It's still one time. Same performance with respect to read, same performance with respect to write, but you have redundancy, that's very important. Same performance with respect to reads or writes, if you send reads and writes in serial. Of course, what you can do in RAID 1 is you can send half of the requests to one drive and the other half to this drive, assuming that both drives are still alive. You can paralyze at least the read requests. And that's a very nice feature of RAID 1. So you can double the read performance in the sense that if you have multiple read requests at the same time, you can distribute them among the different devices. So a drawback of RAID 1 is of course that you waste a lot of storage for keeping that redundant information. So people thought about better RAID levels and one of them is RAID 4. So for RAID 4 you need at least three hard drives. Here I'm showing four hard drives. And what you do here is again similar to RAID 0. So you stripe the blocks over the different devices. So here's block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so forth. But in addition to that, on one of the drives you keep parity information. That is, the XORs of the blocks of the other drives. So which means this parity here can be computed as follows. You basically take block 1, you XOR it with block 2, XOR that with block 3, and that gives you the stripe 1 parity. Yeah, so this XOR that, XOR that is that, and so forth. This XOR that, XOR that is that and so forth. And this has a very nice property because whatever drive you lose in this situation you can now recover the missing block. So assume we're losing let's say whatever this one. So let's assume we lose that drive and now we want to recover the data and recovering the data may be that a request comes in for block, num block number 8 so we have to compute the data based on the information in block 7, block 9 and stripe 3 parity. And this is very easy because as we are using XOR, the contents of block 8 is defined as block 7, XOR, block 9, XOR, stripe 3 parity, stripe 3 parity. And with that we can get back to block number 8. It's very easy and you can do that just for reading but you can do the same trick as in a failure with RAID 1. So once the hard disk fails the user or the system administrator is alerted and then you remove this drive without switching off the RAID system. You can do it while keeping the system alive. You remove this disk drive from the system, put in a new drive and then the system will start copying and reconstructing the contents of that drive until all of the drives are available again with the original data. So that's a very nice feature of a RAID system. So in RAID 4, with respect to read, what are the properties? With respect to read, we have the striping property. S with RAID 0, it's a similar property. So if you want to read a file, you can parallelize the read operation over the different disks. Yeah, you can read, for instance, data from those three disks, from the first three disks in parallel and with that you can expect three times the read performance as, as if you use just a single hard drive. A problem in this configuration is that whenever you write anything this disk number four is affected because this drive parity of course must reflect the XOR operation over the different blocks. 
So if any block is written on devices one, two, three, you have to write something here. And that's a problem in RAID 4 because this disk quickly becomes a bottleneck in write operations. Therefore, people came up with a different RAID level that's called RAID 5. So RAID 5 is very similar to RAID 4. The only difference is that the stripe parity information is not sitting on a single disk anymore as before. So if you go back, all this parity information was sitting on this disk. Now it's distributed over the different devices. We have the same error coding, the same properties as with RAID 4. We basically use XOR to get back to any of the blocks. However, the parity is distributed. This means we can still read data in parallel very effectively. We have the redundancy as in RAID 4. So redundancy means we can lose one of the disks. You know, we can lose one of the disks, assume we are losing this one, and we can reconstruct all of that information by XORing. That's still possible. It's the same properties as RAID 4, just performance-wise, the right operations are distributed over the different disks. And, and with that, this single disk, as in RAID 4, is not the bottleneck anymore. RAID 5 also has the same properties with respect to the number of disks. You need at least three disks for a RAID 5 system and you can survive at most one disk failure, only one disk failure. If you're losing two disks, yeah, then you, you lose at least some of the data. You won't be able to recover all of the data again. But sometimes you want to be able to survive even that. You even want to be able to survive more than one disk failure. And there are RAID levels that support that. So one is the RAID 6 level. Here in RAID 6, you really need four hard disks or more to make this happen. And you have two different parities. So one is a simple parity, the XOR parity as used before. For the other parity, you have different options. So one is to use read Solomon codes. The other is to do an XOR information in a different way. Then actually, there exists a paper that, that compares the different types of parities out there. But the bottom line is, these methods all work in a way that even if you lose two of the disks, any two disks in that configuration, you're still able to get back to the original data. So you can survive two disk failures. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!